Hello, bonjour. My name is George. I'm the CEO of Pascal. I'm very pleased to be here today. And I would like to start by thanking Matt Johnson in QCWare for the invitation to, to speak here today. And I would also like to introduce Mauro D'Acorangelo, one of our quantum software developers. So that will be the second Italian-French uh, duo in a row. I hope you will enjoy it. Uh, so today, we will tackle four topics. In, a, in the first part, we will walk you through the history of Pascal, a company wha that was forged out the great tradition of French physics. And by doing so, we will tell you why we are so excited about neutral atom as a technology. Then, we will introduce you first of the kind commercial results that we're starting to have with our customers, solving real, real life problems today. Uh, oops, sorry. Then, we will lay out our technical roadmap. At the risk of spoiling the surprise, let me say this. Our quantum processors are ready for business today. They are on the fast track toward quantum advantage as soon as 2024. And they can also deliver for the, uh, into the fault tolerance era. And finally, we will explain how you can partner with us. Not just only to develop quantum application, but to really build the future of your industry. So, let's start with the science. After all, it's how Pascal began. The company was created three years ago, in 2019, by a group of people, including myself, Antoine Broways, and Alain Spey, who was recently awarded the Nobel, the Nobel Prize in Physics. From the pioneers in neutral atom, we've grown into an organization of 100 scientists and engineers. The company's belief is that neutral atom has, uh, <coughs> is a great technology for quantum computing. Not only because of its potential for a full tolerance quantum computing in the longer term, but also for the near term quantum adv advantage that it can deliver today in the analog era. So, talking about the, uh, the, sh the short term, neutral atoms have great assets. The first one is pristine qubit, built by nature, atoms, allowing us to reach very long coherence time in the range of tens of milliseconds. Second, our processors are fully field programmable, increasingly dramatically the efficiency of the quantum algorithm and the, uh, the operation cycles. Third, we have uh, multi multiple analog modes allowing us to solve a varied set of problems. With our track record of applying quantum computing to uh, machine learning, to simulation, to optimization, we believe we are on the fast track to put neutral atom to, uh, to, uh, to uh, quantum advantage by 2024. And now, looking at the longer term, the inherent advantages of a, of a platform like scalability, long qubit coherence time, and high connectivity will take neutral atom into the fault tolerance era. We have a quantum processor with 350 qubits, with fidelities of 99%. We know how to scale to 10,000 qubits in a single module without the needs of interconnect. To get there, it will both take, take engineering and science. But we have, among our team, a 40-year track record in delivering both. And we feel confidence in our roadmap. So as proud as we are of this fundamental research heritage, now the technology is, is breaking out of the lab into real world life work, workflow. Let me draw your attention to, this, to the use case we are now solving with our customers, problems that are poised to unlock business value far earlier than we thought. Let me hand, hand it over to Mauro to walk, you, to walk you through two exciting great results. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Mauro and I'm a quantum software engineer at Pascal. Uh, in fact, I was inspired to join Pascal thanks in part to the track of scientific achievement that George just described, but also for the opportunity to work on real problems with real clients in real workflows. And I'm going to share with you two examples of that today. So let's start off with an example in uh, uh, financial risk management. We partnered up with Credit Agricole and Multiverse Computing to apply quantum machine learning methods 
to predicting deteriorating credit scores. Now, the classic problem is as follows. Uh, you want to manage financial risk in loans. Uh, when a company's credit rating falls from investment grade to below, they're called fallen angels. Now, improperly rating fallen angels can cost lenders hundreds of millions of dollars per year. But, however, uh, this problem of identifying fallen angels in the first place is computationally challenging. Uh, Credit Agricole currently uses what is called a random forest machine learning method for this task. But these uh, classical methods, they often run into issues of saturating computational resources or limited model interpretability as the number of variables and data sets grows. Now, our approach here, our approach here um, is called QBoost. QBoost is a quantum algorithm and the goal is to train a strong classifier out of an ensemble of uh, weaker classifiers that can tell us whether a loan is going to be a fallen angel or not. Now, we have implemented uh, QBoost in conjunction with a um, proprietary algorithm called uh, random graph sampling on our 60 qubit QPU. And without going into too much detail, um, this algorithm works by t taking repetitions on the QPU and each repetition capturing a small feature of the whole problem and then the, the final solution is reconstructed out of the ensemble of results. Now, we have conducted the study on real historical data supplied by Credit Agricole, and we have benchmarked the performance against, uh, the, of the quantum algorithm against the, the classical one. What we find is that compared to the highly optimized random forest method, uh, we achieve the same performance, but with a much smaller uh, learning ensemble and faster training times. So just to give you a sense, we reached the same precision, but with a model that's 96% less complex than the classical counterpart. Now, we have a way forward uh, using multiverse computing software. We have simulated the performance on a kind of hardware that's not yet available, but is on a roadmap by 2024. And allowing additional flexibility on the qubit interactions and uh, using up to 90 qubits, uh, the results show that we can actually achieve some concrete advantage over the classical counterpart. Now, building towards near-term advantage, the second example that I want to share with you today is an example in Pascal's proprietary uh, graph kernel algorithm. The use case in this case is, is a biochemistry problem. So there's an interesting and challenging problem in, in biochemistry, which is to classify the toxicity of chemicals based on their molecular structure. Um, perhaps some of you have attended the talk uh, that took place in this room a couple of days ago on PFAS chemicals. Um, that's an example of the kind of uh, compounds that we want to classify. Now, the computational challenge in this case is classifying massive data sets of data that has the structure of a graph. However, neutral atom quantum computing lends itself particularly well to handle these kind of uh, graph-like problems. We have Pascal have um, developed a novel quantum machine learning algorithm for the classification called Quantum Evolution Kernel, or CAC for short. We've implemented CAC on a real data set of 286 molecules, each of those uh, composed of 2 to 32 atoms. Now, I want to draw your attention first to the quality of the hardware itself. What you see here, where I'm pointing, is called a kernel matrix. Now, you don't need to understand what a kernel matrix is, 
But the important part is this. If you imagine to cut the matrix across the main diagonal here, and you look at the top triangular half, that would be the data that we got from classical noiseless emulation of our QPU. So in other words, what a perfect neutral atom quantum computer would produce based on our theoretical understanding of it. Now, if you look at the lower triangular part, that's the data that we obtain experimentally on a real machine. They are supposed to be the specular image of each other. And the astonishing extent to which they actually are is a confirmation of the high fidelity of the QPU. And I hope it will give you a visual indication of how analog quantum computing can be resilient to noise right now in 2022. In fact, we estimate that implementing Keck on a gate-based quantum computer would incur in a factor 1,000 um, delay in, um, in complexity. So we trained um, a variety of classical kernels to benchmark against Keck. And what we find is that Keck demonstrates on par performance compared to the best classical kernel. And there are investigations underway on possible extensions of Keck to handle more complex data, for example. But we already have some results showing a 14 to 32% improvement on an artificial data set that was built in such a way as to emphasize the, uh, the richness of the quantum dynamics, in a sense. So if you would like more information on, on the two examples that I shared with you today, uh, you can refer to the papers who are available uh, on archive. Or you can come and visit us at the booth downstairs. Uh, some of you already are. And with this, I'll hand it back to George. Thank you, Mao. Well, these were just two examples of what we are currently achieving with customers. Let me give you a couple more highlights. Uh, we are currently, uh, in the utility sector, we are currently working with a, a leader player to apply our solutions to the management of, elect of the electricity grid. In the automotive sector, we have partnered with BMW to, uh, to, uh, to <coughs> battery material simulation and to solve uh, partial differential equations for metal deformation and vehicle design. In the healthcare sector, we are working with Johnson & Johnson to apply quantum machine learning on de novo drug discovery. And finally, about climate modeling, we are also working with PISF, applying quantum neural network to solve a complex set of nonlinear partial differential equations. So now, with Credit Agricole, we are entering in the so-called enterprise-grade era that BCG featured a couple days ago. It means applying quantum hardware and solutions on real-world data flow, uh, on real-world data, sorry, into real, in, into real data flow. It's a very practical milestone. Yes, there are some technical achievements under the hood. Our processor has more than 300 qubits with fidelity of 99%. But what defines the uh, enterprise-grade era is the fact that a customer has concluded that using a quantum computer can achieve better results than classical ones, and is working with us to build solutions into their active workflow now. So as excited as we are about the business impact our processors are starting to have, we are even more sanguine about the future. So where are we on this roadmap? So with Credit Agricole, today, we are now in the enterprise-grade era. The next step is quantum advantage. We believe that by 2024, we will implement calculation in whole, in whole likelihood a simulation of quantum systems far more efficiently than classical solutions. For this, we will need to scale our systems to thousands of qubits with fidelities of 99.9%. .9%. The next step is digital fault tolerance. For this, we will need to scale to 10,000 of qubit with fidelities of four nines. Single qubit and multi qubit gates have been already implemented on, on neutral atom platform, and we have a clear path toward a, a fault advantage. So, if you if you if you have nothing else away to take from this roadmap, I hope it's the following: 
the development of the uh, analog uh, quantum advantage era is entirely continuous and synergistic with the fault tolerance development. The we do not need to re-engineer our processor. And it, it is these features which allows us today to, to be in the enterprise grade and to, to, set up, to set up us to the rest of our fault tolerance era in the future. So we are fortunate enough to have uh, many early uh, uh, customers who are committed to dedicate their effort and resource to, to, to work with us. So today, BCG estimates that 90% of the value generated, generated by uh, quantum computing will accrue to a mere 10% of the end users. Really, a winner takes more scenario, especially in the industries where IP is critical. And they give three reasons for that. First, quantum computing will be talent constrained. Even leading companies will have to dedicate their A team to so many clients. Second, we will also be hardware constrained, at least in the early days of quantum advantage. There will not be so many platforms around. Third, quantum solutions take time to build, not only talking about the quantum component, but all the work that needs to happen in data and resource integration. As a conclusion of this, the, the, the revenues will shift to the, early, uh, <coughs> to the early technical suppliers who are the earliest to reach quantum advantage. So that being said, I, I think that these are truths that apply to all players. We will all be talent and resource constrained. What makes Pascal different is that we are partnership ready today. We have a full stack offer, and we have quantum processors, which are already delivering uh, value for, for, for our clients. Our full stack offer spans dedicated hardware to no-code environment Pulsar Studio. We are committed to dedicate our best talent to our customers, to build with our, building with our customers, to, uh, making them true innovators and disruptors in the industries. So, let me wrap up the four points we went into land today. First, Pascal has a rock-solid foundation in physics. Second, but now the technology is, is breaking out of the lab, delivering value for our customers now, customers like Credit Agricole or BMW. Third, we are on the fast track toward quantum advantage, a milestone that set up us to the race toward fault tolerance in the future. It is now a time to partner and build enduring advantage uh, through quantum computing. We remain open with partnership slots av uh, available left for serious partners who want to, to revolutionize their industries. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you to our speakers. We have time for a couple of questions. Are you planning to operate only as a, um, an analog machine, or are you also considering some additional implementation? Uh, OK, so my bad. I thought it was clear. We are currently working on analog computing for the short term, because I strongly believe that it is the shortest path toward quantum advantage. And all the results we've shown on the two use cases have been obtained thanks to this analog mode. And at the same time, we are working on different implementation modes, such as digital gates and fault tolerance for the future. Do you have any more questions? Uh, I, I may be missed, but uh, how long would the analog quantum advantage era continue? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a good question. <laughs> Um, I, I, don't, I don't have the answer, to be honest. We'll see. <laughs> I, 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 the important point for me is to deliver an advantage. And for this, I'm sure that uh, analog will provide something. With digital, I mean, let's see what will happen. <laughs>